Hey you, it's me, and today I'll be showing you how you can draw anything featuring a beaver. Let's go! First off, we're going to pick a subject. For the purpose of this video, I decided I want to learn how to draw a beaver. You can pick whatever subject you'd like to learn. Now that we have our subject, we're going to find some photographs of it. I'm going to show you the images I chose while I'm drawing the images, so those are coming. Just remember that when you're searching for images, you should find some stock or non-copyrighted images so you don't end up in trouble. Also, if you're drawing just for studies and aren't getting any money from it, it's okay as long as you give credit where credit is due. A good reference site is Pinterest, so if you don't know where else to look, that's a good place. For today, we'll be looking at these images for body structure, proportions, shapes, and anatomy. Use the photos you saved and try to find as many from different views to help you with three-dimensionality and draw your studies. Perhaps concentrate on the main shapes of the body in the first one, the head itself in another, and the anatomy underneath it all and proportions in another. So the first drawing that I did, I concentrated on drawing the big shapes first and I helped myself by drawing really loose and as sort of elegant and active lines as possible as you can see. So the first big shape was the beaver's back and then I sort of did the front, then I did the front view and then I just sort of started filling in the shape. The main thing is that it's supposed to resemble the beaver but just in shape and I guess sort of the proportions are also as important, but it's more important that it feels active and not static. Because usually if you use reference, the only issue with photographs is that you only have that one view and you usually then sort of make it really not as active as it could be. So whatever kind of photograph you have, try to make it even more active than it is. If you see that it's a line that has a slight curve, make that curve even stronger. Or contrast it by doing on the other side a really straight line or like a line that goes more in. An example of that is on these this beaver's head where one line is super straight while the other is a bit more inside. So for the next one, I also concentrated on the shapes and I think I did a bit better in this one just in the sense that I really drew like two big shapes right away because for the first one, I was kind of going with lines first and you should really, really, really try to look at what kind of shapes does the head and the body make and first draw that and then go with the lines that go inside like the legs and then the toes and the face and so forth. And I guess in this sense, you can also draw the tail as well, because it's a big part of it. Basically, just really look at the big shapes. You can help yourself with that by squinting your eyes, because then you can see the big shapes first. So for the next picture, well, picture, for the next drawing, I decided to concentrate on the head. Now, this head isn't perfect, but it helped me to see how does the hair work on the beaver and it all goes like a wave towards the back and I guess the head in this drawing kind of looks like a weird mutated dog but it doesn't matter if the drawing you draw doesn't look as good or the same as the, uh, the photograph because the main thing is that you learn something from it. So for this one it really helped for the small ear and how far apart it is from the eye and the nose and basically just how much a beaver kind of resembles a dog in a way even though it doesn't it's super confusing but also fun because you can learn a lot of things from these types of studies and don't take them super serious really try to make it playful because the moment you make your studying playful it's a lot more fun and you will do it with a lot of excitement. The moment you make your practices and studies too serious, you won't have that much joy in doing them and you might not make that many. So this next one was an interesting drawing and I actually chose it because it's one of very rare photographs that had the beaver's tail in between its legs 
and it looked super interesting to me so I decided why not and I tried to draw it and I really like how it came out because all the smaller shapes are inside the body and the only shapes that are outside of it are just the legs and the tail and even the whole thing together could be one giant blob shape like it doesn't matter if the shape isn't a cube or a circle the main thing is that you can see the shape it's in and draw it so in a way this guy's shape could be like a weird rock and just try to see the same type of shapes in your own drawings from whatever subject you decide to draw with this one it was really interesting because it came right after the face drawing and i think that kind of helped also with drawing the face for this one i feel like the face is a lot more like the beavers in the photographs and also i tried to do the legs or its feet a bit more detailed in a way and yeah it was a super fun one then the next one ha also has a really nice simple shape it kind of feels like a hedgehog yeah it's kind of like a hedgehog without its um what are they called its needles and it's super interesting and also i think the face kind of turned out really similar to that beaver character from Narnia so that's really fun and also with these studies you can kind of start seeing like certain things such as how are the proportions of each thing for example its ear and eye have a lot of space in between its behind legs are super canine like and can really get together and then its tail it's it's one of the most interesting things ever because I have not seen a tail like it. It just looks so interesting, like how it comes out of its butt, basically. Like it looks like it has a f mouth from which the tail comes out of. And then I decided to try to draw a beaver from my own imagination. So I chose what kind of a pose I want to do. And I tried to use all the knowledge I got from these studies sketches to put it all in this one. So I tried to concentrate how the proportions work, how the spacing works, how the shapes and anatomy would work. And I think this initial sketch was okay, although it doesn't look as much as a beaver, but more like that character from <laughs> Ice Age. But that's completely all right because we're here to learn. Uh, that's you know, that's just part of being an artist and doing new things. But I do think that this sketch was really good in the sense of drawing the hind legs and the first legs and its tail. So the only issue with this drawing is its head. So that's the place where I would still need to work on. But I also really like how the nose and the mouth turned out. Like, it's a cute creature, but it's definitely not a beaver yet. By the time you're done doing the studies, you have at least some sort of basic knowledge you can go by to draw your own version of the subject. Due to studying, your subject illustration will have proper proportions and shapes, but perhaps not enough character or style. This is where number two kicks in. Find some reference photos of other people who have drawn the subject you're looking for. You're going to study their way of drawing it, but not to steal their style, just so you can see how you can stylize the real subject into an illustration. So for these drawings, I decided to use as many referenced cartoon illustrations as I could, but there weren't that many, and I don't really know any artist that draws beavers, so I just tried to find as many different looking ones, even though the first and second drawing look really similar to each other. So the point of these drawings were not to make complete replicas of the drawings of the other artists, but to see how they made it and what to take from it. So for example, you'll see that this drawing doesn't look exactly the same as the drawing reference. Another issue is that a lot of these drawings I noticed uh, didn't have the behind legs like the swimming ones, just normal ones. And I can kind of understand when that's done for like cartoons because the other ones would be a lot more difficult. But for example, if you're drawing it for an illustration, you can totally do like a more detailed thing. 
so then for the next drawing ah yeah i made a mistake so the second and third drawings are connected in a way because their faces and bodies are really similar in proportions and style so basically you'll just see that these two are super similar and i guess i kind of made the eyes kind of more animated than cartoonish i have this issue with style but i'm working on it and yeah basically they're really good when it comes to shapes because you can see what kind of shapes the illustrator decides to use for them for example for this one you can see that the head is kind of done with three circles if you can see it like there's the upper head and then the cheeks are both their own circles and that makes the head and the same goes for the body although the body has more of a pillow shape and that's kind of the things you see when you do studies because if you don't do studies you're just like oh yeah i really love this thing but you don't know why then you can kind of see things a lot a lot better and you can also see like colors like for, for here i wasn't concentrating on colors but for example if you want to get better at colors you need to do color studies for like screenshots or whatnot like this week i actually did a screenshot watercolor study for the first time from a doctor who episode and i was really looking at the colors and how many layers of which color i need to do to get the right colors and by the time i was done with the illustration it looked very similar to the screenshot of course it's not there yet because it was my first study but it makes me feel like i leveled up at that spot at that type of drawing and the more color the more color studies you'll do the better you'll get at it and just like with a beaver if you study a lot then you can translate that into your own original drawing which is basically the point of learning how to draw anything so then we have the final illustration which is my own interpretation of all the styles and reference combined so you can see that this one is a lot more different than the first drawing from my mind because i understand it a bit better and there's also a bit more time between those drawings and this one so that my brain had enough time to put it all together put one and two together and you can see that this is an actual beaver and i'm actually really proud that by the end of this drawing tutorial and drawing studies i'm able to draw a beaver I'm not really sure why I'll need this, if I'll ever need it, but if someone ever decides to ask me to draw their beaver character, I'll be able to say, heck yeah, I know how to draw beavers, I learned from that one YouTube video, and it was great. And no, that was not sarcasm, that was actual excitement. So yeah, that's basically it. I decided to line art the final character just so it stands out from the rest because it's the final creation and basically what you can do if you study from stuff around yourself. Just really don't take things too serious and everything should be fine. And even if your first studies don't look like these, like as great, um, it's all about getting better at it and doing a lot of it because I did a lot of other type of studies, so I already know kind of how to put proportions together and anatomy and stuff, because I already learned from like how to draw dogs or cats, and that can kind of be mixed into this, because the beaver has some shapes that resemble a dog, for example, and its, its legs actually super remind me of a squirrel, and I did squirrel studies like a year ago. so everything is connected so the more you'll draw and the more you'll do studies of things the more things you'll be able to draw and believe it or not that is super refreshing and good because sometimes maybe you don't feel like drawing the same thing all over and again and with this knowledge you can be like well you know what i can draw a beaver if i feel bored and don't know what else to draw so yeah i really 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 hope this helped you out with at least an introduction to how to do studies perhaps 
and I would really love to see what kind of studies you've done. So I hope you enjoyed our adventure together and if you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell button so you'll be notified of my next upload. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Here's a video of me drawing a gender bent version of Little Red Riding Hood and I'll hope to see you next Wednesday when I'll be drawing a gender bent version of Snow White. If you have an Instagram or Twitter or DeviantArt, you can tag my name in there and for the next video, I would love to feature your artworks at the end credits. So yeah, remember to be patient and positive and bye bye